There is only one doctor that people get excited for. And that's Doctor Who. And that's why today we are bringing you 107 Doctor Who facts. My name is Kasich. I'm V. I'm Chad Wild Clay. And, and this, this is Cinematica. Number one. Most recently, several lost episodes were recovered from a television station in Nigeria. Number two. Patrick Troughton was the first doctor to wear a bow tie. Dr. Matt Smith said that Troughton is his favorite doctor and one of his favorite stories is Tomb of the Cybermen. Number three. John Pertwee's doctor spent the most time grounded on Earth after the Time Lords stopped his TARDIS from working as punishment for stealing the TARDIS. Number four. The Daleks were introduced in the second story and turned Doctor Who into a sensation. But before the episode was filmed, a BBC exec described the original script as one of the worst things I've ever read. It can't go out. Fortunately for the producer, uh, they didn't have any of their stories ready to replace it, and the rest is history. Number five. The roar of the Yeti in recently rediscovered 1968 classic The Web of Fear was achieved by slowing down the sound of a flushing toilet. <laughs> Number six. The doctor actually is a doctor. In a sick bay in the 1967 story The Moon Base, the doctor was asked, Listen, are you really a medical doctor? He replied, Yes, I think I was once, Polly. I think I took a degree once in Glasgow. 1888, I think. Lister. Number seven. The doctor and his companion had fought and encountered around 400 unique monsters, aliens, and villains throughout the series. Personally, the Weeping Angels are my favorite. Let me know who's your favorite in the comment section down below. I'm gonna guess Daleks, because that seems to be everybody's favorite. Number eight. Peter Capaldi and Karen Gillan both previously appeared in an earlier episode as side characters before gaining their roles later on on the series. Number nine. Doctor Who is banned in China because the government authorities don't want to promote anything that could be seen as rewriting history. That is amazing! Number 10, Tom Baker was briefly married to co-star Lala Ward, who played his companion and Time Lady Romana. Number 11, the doctor said in an episode of The Sarah Jane Adventures that he can regenerate an infinite number of times, not just 12 times. Number 12, Paul McGann's doctor was the first to kiss his companion. The moment has led to a modern tradition of the doctor now kissing all of his companions. Clever move, Paul. Number 13. Bow ties are cool. That's what Matt Smith said in his first appearance as the doctor. Bow tie sales shot up by 94% within a month at one high street store. Bow ties are cool. Bow ties are cool. Bow ties are cool. Number 14. The doctor has an array of gadgets, including the sonic screwdriver, which has many uses, including the ability to unlock almost anything. Number 15. The regeneration effect, used for when one doctor changes into the next one, was created at the end of the first series by accident. A faulty mixing desk allowed the image of William Hartnell, the first doctor, to be overexposed almost to white so that Patrick Troughton, the second doctor, could be put in place before the effect faded again. Number 16. The fourth doctor's iconic scarf was created by accident. The costume maker misunderstood her instructions for the scarf and knitted all the wool she had been given. However, Tom Baker liked it and went on to wear it for the show anyway. Number 17. In the 1960s and 1970s, the BBC would routinely destroy TV tapes rather than archiving them. Number 18. Tapes of the early episodes were codenamed Torchwood, an anagram of Doctor Who to protect them from being stolen. The name was then an obvious choice for the later spin-off series. Number 19. The 1996 movie was supposed to be a backdoor pilot, but sadly failed and it would take another nine years before Doctor Who returned. Number 20. Christopher Eccleston chose to keep his northern accent and wear a leather jacket in order to present a grittier incarnation of the doctor and break away from the traditional cravat wearing doctor. Number 21. Social activist Mary Whitehouse lambasted Doctor Who for being too violent in the 70s when Tom Baker was the doctor. Number 22. For the show's 20th anniversary, a feature length special called The Five Doctors was created featuring the first five doctors. Number 23. The doctor's real name remains a complete mystery to all, but a very small number of individuals, including the master, Riversong, and Clara Oswald. Number 24. The character of the doctor was partly inspired by Sherlock Holmes. Comparisons have been made between the doctor and the fictional detective. In fact, both the fourth and 11th doctors have dressed up as Sherlock Holmes in episodes of Doctor Who. Number 25. The Daleks were based on the Nazis. Number 26. Ron Moody was the first first choice to replace the third doctor in 1969, but he turned down the role. Moody later told friends how much he regretted the decision. Number 27. Tom Baker joined a monastery
monastery at the age of 15 and stayed there for six years. Number 28, Peter Capaldi was the same age as William Hartnell when he took on the role of the doctor at age 55. Number 29, while the fourth doctor preferred jelly babies and licorice, the eleventh doctor's dish of choice is fish fingers and custard together. Number 30, singer Kylie Minogue has appeared on the Doctor Who Christmas special. Number 31, the original costume ideas for the eleventh doctor, Matt Smith's look, were very different from his iconic tweed jacket and bow tie. Some of the costume ideas included a buccaneer pirate style one, which Matt wasn't very keen on. Number 32, the original pilot episode, which was thought to be lost forever, was rediscovered in 1978 in a mislabeled film can. Whoa, what's this? Number 33, the distinctive TARDIS sound effect was originally created by simply rubbing the bass strings of a piano with a key. The sound was then modified by the BBC Radiophonic Workshop and then became the well-known sound effect that is still in use variations today. Number 34. The show employed the BBC's first ever female producer, Miss Lambert. Number 35. Internal memos from the BBC's original series on Earth in 2010 described the metaphysical change of the Doctor's regeneration as an experience similar to that of an LSD trip. Number 36. In the 1965 Dalek story The Chase, the crew of the TARDIS are shown rocking out to a clip of the Fab Four performing Ticket to Ride on Top of the Pops. Thanks to a BBC archive purge, this is the only surviving footage of the band on top of the pops. Number 37. Roy Williams is a companion to have died the most number of times and come back from the dead. Number 38. The doctor did have a family, children, and grandchildren, but lost it all when Gallifrey was destroyed. Number 39. Colin Baker has said that he did not like his clown outfit, and he had suggested something more like the costume Christopher Eccleston doctor wore. Sadly, he was overruled and the Patrick costume won. Number 40. During his travels throughout time, the doctor has met and in some cases befriended plenty of historical figures, including Leonardo da Vinci, William Shakespeare, Albert Einstein, Charles Dickens, Queen Victoria, Elizabeth I, First and Winston Churchill. Number 41. Doctor Who is currently BBC Worldwide's biggest selling TV show around the world. Number 42. Asteroid 3325, a main belt asteroid discovered in 1984, is named TARDIS after the Doctor's time space machine. Number 43. Prior to 1973, the key to the TARDIS looked much like an ordinary yell key. In fact, it was an ordinary yell key. John Pertwee, however, wanted something fancier, so helped to create the copper spade like key that made its first appearance in the Time Warriors. Number 44. Tom Baker reportedly turned down the role of Gandalf in Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings films because he didn't want to spend months on end in New Zealand. Number 45. The Daleks have become icons. In 2009, one of the only remaining 1963 Daleks sold for $31,000. Number 46. The Doctor has an aversion to guns since William Hartnell's era. In The Gunfighters, he expresses his disgust towards them. Number 47. The idea of regeneration came about following health concerns for William Hartnell. The decision certainly ensures the longevity of the show. Number 48. The Daleks are the Doctor's greatest foe. He has faced and defeated them more times than any other villain on the show. Number 49. Matt Smith is the youngest actor to play the Doctor starting at 26 years old. Number 50. Both Peter Capaldi, the 12th Doctor, and David Tennant, the 10th Doctor, were huge fans of Doctor Who growing up. Number 51. Before 1970, Doctor Who was filmed in black and white. Spearhead from Space was the first serial to be shot in color. Number 52. According to the book now on the big screen, the unofficial and unauthorized guide to Doctor Who at the cinema in the 1980s, Paramount Pictures considered making a Doctor Who film which featured Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson somehow manages to get into every fax list. Number 53. In 2007, a St. Paul's church held a Doctor Who themed service to draw in young people, even drawing comparisons between Jesus and the Doctor himself. Number 54. Sidney Newman wanted to save Doctor Who's dwindling viewing figures in the 80s by introducing a time lady. Number 55. When the Daleks were first introduced, they required radiation and static electricity to survive. In addition, and incredibly weirdly rather than 
going straight for the kill, the Daleks chose to temporarily paralyze the companion and warn him they would kill him if they tried to escape again. It wasn't until their second appearance that they became the genocidal maniacs we all know today. Number 56, Aspirin is poisonous to the Gallifreyans, according to the eighth season serial, The Mind of Evil. Number 57, in issue 214 of Doctor Who magazine, the real name of Susan Foreman, the doctor's granddaughter, is said to be Archator, which means Rose in Gallifreyan. Number 58, although Time Lords look human, they're actually aliens with quite a few physical differences. For example, the doctor has two hearts, and respiratory bypass system that allows him to go without air for much longer than a human. <gasps> Number 59. Jamie McCrimmon was the Doctor's longest running companion, appearing in 116 episodes. Number 60. The Eighth Doctor, played by Paul McGann, starred in just one feature length episode of Doctor Who, made in 1996. Number 61. In 2012, after a six year battle, the Patent Office declared that the exterior design of the TARDIS could be patented by the BBC for use on Doctor Who related merchandise. The Metropolitan Police had challenged the application on the ground that the design belonged to them, as it has been used on the streets of Britain as public police telephone boxes in the 1960s. Number 62. When the series was revived in 2005, there was a very real chance that the Daleks themselves were going to be exterminated. The estate of Terry Nation, who was the co-creator of the Daleks, owned their copyright, and to begin with, they were unable to come to an agreement with the BBC. After a lengthy dispute, the Daleks were allowed to return. That'd be so weird, Doctor Who without the Daleks. That doesn't even make any sense. Number 63. The opening episode was an unearthly child a reference to the doctor's granddaughter, Susan, who attended school on Earth and astonished teachers with her alien intellect. Number 64. While the Daleks levitate, seen from the revival series episode, Dalek is famous for disapproving the notion that Daleks can't climb stairs. The first time they were shown with this ability was actually 17 years prior, in remembrance of the Daleks. Number 65. In World War Z, Peter Capaldi played a doctor working for the World Health Organization. Organization. Number 66. During the 60s, if the Daleks failed to appear in an episode, viewing figures would fall. Number 67. David Tennant, who plays the 10th Doctor, who is in real life married to Georgia Malfit, who is the daughter of Peter Davidson, who played the 5th Doctor. Not only that, but Georgia also played the Doctor's clone daughter in the episode The Doctor's Daughter. <laughs> Number 68. TARDIS and Dalek became so familiar to the British audiences that they were added to the Oxford English Dictionary. Number 69. Douglas Adams, who created the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, became the script editor for Doctor Who in 1979. Number 70. The original series ran from 1963 to 1989 and then returned in 2005, as you guys now know. Number 71. The original broadcast of the first episode of Doctor Who was eclipsed by the assassination of JFK the previous day, so the BBC showed it again ahead of the second episode on the following Saturday. Number 72. The 1966 episode The Smugglers is the only Doctor Who production to feature absolutely no incidental music. Number 73. Nine actors have portrayed the Doctor's nemesis the Master. Number 74. BBC carried out audience research in 1972 that found the show was considered to be one of the most violent on television. Number 75. The TARDIS had the ability to become invisible. It happened during the time of the second Doctor when a Cyberman missile struck the TARDIS. Hey look, I'm invisible too! Number 76. Tom Baker, the fourth Doctor, and my dad's favorite, played the Doctor the longest, reaching seven years, starring around 172 episodes between 1974 and 1981. Number 77. Did you know the Doctor's TARDIS has a broken chameleon circuit, which is supposed to enable it to disguise itself to blend into any environment? For example, in ancient Rome, it might look like a Roman pillar or a statue from the outside. However, the very first episode, An Unearthly Child, we discover that the circuit is broken and the TARDIS is stuck in the shape of a police box. Number 78. The sonic screwdriver first appeared in 1968 and was used by the second Doctor. It was then written out of the series in 1982 due to the limitations it caused when writing for the show. It then featured briefly in 1996, and then made a full return in 2005. Number 79. The Wheel in Space, a 1968 six-part Cyberman story, was the only story to be made in all four of the BBC's London studio sites. Number 80. Inspired by the Dalek invasion of Earth, the April 6, May 2005 cover of the Radio Times was voted the greatest magazine cover of all time by the Periodical Publishers Association. Number 81. Rated on the BBC scale of viewer satisfaction, 
Satisfaction, the first episode of Doctor Who received an audience reaction index of 63, which is a completely average score. Number 82. The 1965 episode, Mission to the Unknown, is the only one not to feature the Doctor. It served as an introduction to the 12-part story, The Daleks Master Plan. Number 83. The actors who played the first six Doctors all appear in a family tree featured in the Star Trek The Next Generation episode, The Neutral Zone. Number 84. When it came time for the famous Daleks to be designed, Ridley Scott was working as a designer at the BBC and was originally slated for the job. Due to a scheduling conflict, Scott was unavailable and the job went to Raymond Kuzik instead. Number 85. The first ever episode of Doctor Who called An Unearthly Child first appeared on BBC TV on November 23rd, 1963. Number 86. Doctor Who is listed in the Guinness World Records as the longest running science fiction television show in the world. Number 87. The Doctor's chosen mode of transport for traveling through time, the TARDIS, is an acronym standing for Time and Relative Dimension in Space. Number 88. William Hartnell is officially the first Doctor, but controversially, in the 1976 episode The Brain of Morbius, we saw many other faces on a screen in tended to be even earlier selves of the Doctor. Number 89. In 1977, at the end of season 14 of Doctor Who, came the first full-length documentary about the series, Who's Doctor Who? Number 90. In 2008, the Daleks finally met their match, knocked off the top spot in an RT poll of Doctor Who's scariest foes by terrifying new monsters, the Weeping Angels. The Weeping Angels are my favorite villains. I was part of that poll. I just didn't know it. Number 91. The program was intended to be educational for the family viewing on the early Saturday evening schedule. Initially, it alternated stories set in the past which taught younger audience members about history, with stories set in the future or in the outer space to teach them about science. However, science fiction stories came to dominate the program and the historicals which were not popular with the production team were dropped after the Highlanders. Number 92. Due to Colin Baker's frustration at the way he was treated, having been blamed for low ratings and fired from the show as a result, he refused to return to the show after his regeneration scene. McCoy, who in 1987 and took over the seventh doctor was left to stand in for Baker instead. Number 93. Doctor Who was awarded the 2006 BAFTA for Best Drama Series. Number 94. The fifth doctor wore a piece of celery on his lapel because he was allergic to a certain gas in the Praxis range. Once the celery turned purple, he would eat it and it would save him. I eat the celery. Number 95. The Weeping Angels are based on the children's game What's the Time, Mr. Wolf? Number 96. The Who-mobile was a special vehicle created by the third Doctor and first appeared in the episode called Invasion of the Dinosaurs. It was capable of speeds of 105 miles per hour. Mind the jets at the rear. Right. And frighten the dog. <laughs> Number 97. Many early episodes of Doctor Who were recorded in a single take, so if the actors fluffed their lines, the others just had to cover for them. Number 98. The Doctor has made four appearances on The Simpsons. Number 99. The revived series of Doctor Who has been shown in around 50 countries ranging from Australia to Vietnam. Number 100. New Zealand was the first country outside the UK to show the series starting in 1964. Number 101. After playing Kinser in 2009 Star Trek, Deep Roy became the only actor to have appeared in Doctor Who, Star Trek, and Star Wars. Number 102. Out of all the Doctor Who villains, the Cybermen have had the most redesigns. Number 103. Even Benedict Cumberbatch of Sherlock fame was asked to play the Doctor but he turned down the role because he didn't want to see himself being on school lunch boxes. Number 104. The transmission tapes of 253 Doctor Who episodes were destroyed as it was thought that they had no future value. Number 105. During the late 1960s, Latin America knew the show as Doctor Mysterio. Number 106. The first ever serial, An Unearthly Child, was reshot due to technical difficulties and performance issues back in this era. Television was essentially filmed live with little room for retakes, which meant that the mistakes were often left in. Watching old episodes, you can tell when the actors forgot or stumbled over their lines. And finally, number 107. The first Doctor was initially not very likable, but eventually thawed over time and became more and more friendly. Thank you guys for watching the video. Don't forget to like the video if you like the video to let us know that you like the video. I love saying that. In the comments below, let us know who is your favorite Doctor. Don't forget to let us know which 107 series we should do next. And and We'll see you next time.